Welcome to Scoop World Order. We got a lot to break down. I uh, got a nice victory versus Indiana yesterday. There's a lot to clean up, a lot to clean up, a lot of things that we can do better, a lot of things that I'm sure uh, probably were said in a pretty heated uh, film session today, hopefully by the offensive uh, staff, defensive staff. Great job. Three points. Uh, you're going to win basically every game on the schedule if you can score three or give up three, excuse me. It uh, doesn't matter who you're playing against. All you can do is roll it out versus who you're playing against. So kudos to the defensive stuff. Lots to clean up on offense. We're going to break down a handful of plays, uh, some of the things that we can fix, some of the things we like, some of the things that uh, uh, I think that we're going to get better at over these next two weeks as we play uh, some lesser opponents to get ready for Notre Dame. Uh, real quick, I want to hear who are your MVPs of this week on offense and defense. Uh, go ahead, put those in the chat. Um, and if you enjoy this content, as always, we appreciate these likes so much. They're so huge for us. Click subscribe. Also, click that little alert bell. Those all add up huge for us. Um, shout out where you guys are watching from. Where'd you watch the game from? What are your thoughts on the game? I want your thoughts in the comments. What do we need to fix? What questions do you have? Start flooding uh, the comments right now with what you need us to answer. Uh, if you want big time analysis, get on BuckeyeScoop.com. Uh, myself, Nevada Buck, Bill Green. Uh, we have huge breakdowns on the game, uh, inside out, X's and O's, scheme, personnel, who played, who should have played more, who should have played less. Uh, it's all on BuckeyeScoop.com, the honest website, the one where we get after it. And we really want to give you guys some really thorough discourse, not just pablum like everyone else seems to peddle. With that being said, I'm going to bring in my good friend, Nevada Buck. Nevada, you've had a day to digest it. You probably rewatched the game like I did. Um, how are you feeling the day after, um, after you've seen the game with a fresh set of eyeballs? Um, I think I'm better about the game. I think I'm, you know, I, 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 I think that there's, there's a lot to clean up. And as you said, I, the good news is I think it's clean upable. I don't think it's, there's, I don't think we have a fatal flaw that can't be fixed by adjusting scheme, by making some other, you know, nuance, by making some moves. Um, you know, we can talk about, you know, coaching stuff, but it's not, you know, I, I've never been of the opinion that any of these things couldn't be fixed. We talked about yesterday about how, you know, some really great teams had some really crappy opening games and, and some seasons, you know, games throughout the season that were just completely, you know, inexplicably bad. So, you know, this one certainly doesn't even reach the annals of terrible games in Ohio State. These are things that you can build upon. These are things that you can fix. Um, but I think Ohio State's got to fix them because otherwise these are going to become recurring problems, but we can break those down and we can, I mean, I, I've got about 10 different things. We can talk about little things, big things, uh, medium things. So, uh, let, let's get after it. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think there's a lot of things you can correct. Um, again, the beauty of football is anything that gave you issues week one, you're going to see it week two, week three, week four. Um, that's just how football is, you know, teams, uh, most coaches aren't overly bright and they love to copy stuff. So if something was giving us problems uh, on offense uh, from a defensive schematic thing, you bet Youngstown State's going to try to do it. Western Michigan, especially Notre Dame, who actually has their actual players, uh, they're going to try to do it. So it's going to be real interesting. Uh, well, we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to open it up with, um, I'm going to break down one play that I'm going to get into the film booth. So, you know, an issue that I had uh, with what we were doing is we really went heavy with the tight ends. I was, I've never seen that many, that much tight end usage really since the Jim Trussell days, mid 2000 ish type deal. Uh, a lot of K, a lot of G Scott, a lot of Joe Royer, Luke Montgomery wearing the 98 jersey as the, as the jumbo. Um, we had a lot of really cloudy, congested boxes, which I think is supremely difficult. And it's even harder when Ryan Day does not believe in reading anybody and we never read anybody and we just, you know, we don't do that. And my, and again, the guy I give a lot of credit to is Matt Gariani, who was in our staff room last year and worked for, uh, you know, uh, Jim Knowles. So he knows Jim Knowles implicitly well. He knows Ryan Day's offense very well because he schemed us up beautifully. Uh, he just frankly didn't have players that were good enough to do some things. And, and we busted some things. Again, we've got four and five star type guys they've got two and three star you know one star type guys so eventually the talent is going to win out but this was a play um you know again it always is comical to me when people say oh trey henderson sucks oh chip trevanum sucks oh the o-line sucks oh everybody sucks but when you look at the scheme sometimes like this is a play um again th this ends up being a play where we give the visual of a read. I'm just going to play it one time all the way through, and then I'll replay it. Um, so right here, number one, the defensive end, who's kind of cocked in on the left tackle, Josh Simmons, he is not 
respecting the quarterback pool at all. And that is from the defensive coordinator saying, Ryan Day thinks his quarterbacks are made out of porcelain. They're not allowed to ever run the ball. He might give a little illusion of a read, but we never actually read it. So don't even honor the quarterback pool ever. So watch how this defensive end, who we don't block, because in general, on read option, you don't block that guy, uh, tees off on Chip. So watch this. So look at Chip. Like, I don't know. Like, like Cade Stover, who's an All-American, is supposed to come across this formation and get number one. He has no chance. Because for one, we never changed our snap count a single time yesterday. So by this point in the game, the D-line was teeing off on our offensive line because we literally won on one snap count in the entire game. And two, when you don't have any sort of congestion, like I think Julian Fleming's late here because he shouldn't be right in front of the mesh right as we're running this play, but he is because um, he almost runs into Cade Stover here. So you watch this play. And Chip just gets hogtied in the backfield, and Cade really doesn't have a chance. So, again, I call that a loser play. We'll run it one more time. You know, you, you got to get out of this. On third and five, like, Cade can't get there. So, you know, sometimes you got to put your guys in a situation where they can actually be successful. And, you know, now if Kyle pulls this, because this is a pull read, like right here, like when, when they crash down, so just a real 101 read option deal. If the defensive end crashes down and tackles the running back, the quarterback's supposed to pull it. Now, we don't run a read option because, again, our quarterbacks are made out of porcelain, can't get hurt, and heaven forbid they ever get nicked. But if Kyle pulls this right here, you know, and, and Julian can get anything on, on the, the corner or the Sam linebacker or whoever this wide guy is, then we got a chance, at least at some sort of a productive play. But when this is a give all the way, this is an automatic loser play. It's what everybody might call loser play. So, you know, when you call these, and we called a lot of them yesterday, and you have no way of getting out of it, it's dangerous. I mean, you're going to get, for one, you're going to get your running back kill. For two, you're going to kill the morality of, of the offense when you when you call plays that even if you have six Orlando paces and Peyton Manning or Aaron Rodgers or Michael Vick at quarterback, it, none of it matters if you're getting tackled in the backfield. So, um, Nevada, what's your reaction to that initial play as I, as I shift over into our film room? Well, I think... One of the things, you know, a helping technician came in today with a, with a post, and he was talking about that snap count. And I hadn't really picked up on that, but you guys did. And I think it's a really oh. important point. We didn't vary our snap count yesterday. No. And Indiana was just teeing off on that. And, you know, the helping technician was talking about, hey, I, in short yardage, he prefers the Tom Herman kind of hyper speed thing where you run up the line really fast and you go really fast. And, that used to be deadly effective when we did it, or long count. But we didn't vary our snap. We didn't vary our cadence at all. Those, those are those little things. That's the kind of the, the game inside the game stuff that I don't think people really realize how important it is to kind of keep them honest. But, you know, on that, that play, you go back to that play. If you go back to the initial uh, formation on that thing, I don't know if you can do that, but you count the bodies. Indiana's got 10 guys within three yards of a line of scrimmage. And it's just really hard. And I, I don't like that action of bringing the, uh, the wide receiver in there, sucking another guy into the box like that. I think that when, when we do that, you know, you know, for me, I'd like to spread them out. I'd like to, you know, I, I think it, it's really counterintuitive. When you see the su successful teams running offense and they run it, you know, with, with far inferior talent to what Ohio State has, they're spreading people out. We're bringing everybody into the box. And like I said, count those, count those heads. Circle those heads right now. How many guys are there? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I count 10 guys within four yards of the ball, three yards of the ball. Yeah. And you're going to run, you're going to run into that. And, and then you're going to wonder why it didn't work. It's like, I, I, I that is scheme. And huh. I, I, I am of, after watching the game over and over again, and as many problems as we had on the offensive line, as any, as many problems we can discuss the quarterback position, I really believe schematically we failed yesterday, and that 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 to me is the thing that needs to get fixed. And I think that you know the the question that I have for you as a captain, all American, you know, four year starter at Ohio State is what is our offensive identity? What what is our core competency? What are we trying to do? And um, if you can't answer that, and if it's not an easy answer for you, then then we've got issues. And I, I think that the offensive staff has got to look at, okay, guys, what are we doing here? Because we seem to be wanting to play the game 
in a phone booth and try, and and I'm not sure why we're doing that with the kind of athletes that we have. And I think that's the first thing they got to fix, but they can fix the little things like the cadence, like the tempo, like, you know, how, you know, how they're running the patterns. I mean, one of the other things we were talking about stretch, you know, how do you stretch the field? Because McCord has a tendency after he gets that first read taken away from him, he goes right to the check down and he won't stay with any of the deeper routes in the second or third read. And, that's an issue as well. You know, that's that whole thing about staying in the phone booth. How do we get out of the phone booth? How do we spread the field? And I think once we do that, then this offense is really going to click and really catch up with uh, with this defense, which I really think is going to be a, a strength. And I've been saying that all off season. So lots to work on, but lots of opportunity to be better. Well, I, I just think that like when you look at that picture and you've got, um, you know, you got nine in the box and then you look at who we have in the box. We have our five offensive linemen. You have Cade Stover, but then you have a who's not going to block anybody. Julian's not going to block anybody. Kyle's not going to block anybody. And then you've got Chip who's carrying the ball. So it's like nine legitimately on six, you know, I mean, because if you don't read anybody, then you know, if, we would, if we would actually run read option, you might have a shot. But when you don't read anything, I mean, dude, you're I mean, it, it, like, I just I don't know. If I'm the offensive line coach, I don't know what I'm supposed to say to my guys because you can block everybody and they're still going to have two to three guys free. So unless you have God at tailback, you know, and he can teleport through the guy hitting him in the backfield, there's no chance. And again, there were time and time again, we put our guys in terrible situations. Again, I don't know. I, again, we're trying to protect these young tackles, which I respect, you know, because we're running the two tight ends. I was, I was the guy saying the loudest, hey, you better protect these tackles. First time they've played get them going. And it turns out our tackles actually played better than our guards did. And our guards are supposed to be, you know, the, the, the linchpin of our offensive line and they both didn't play well. Um, but I, I just think when you have Marvin and Emeka, man, and then your third guy is Julian Fleming, who actually looked good yesterday or Carnell Tate. And you're taking those guys off the field to put on a second tight end. Who's a lesser guy. I don't know. And again, I'm just not into, you know, I, I think we need to be physical running the ball. I think that, you know, I respect that we're trying to run some power, but we haven't been power in years, you know, which is pull the guard, double team. And it looked like it, like we were terrible at it. You know, it looked like we'd never run, uh, you know, Mickey or, or power. Cause that used to be our core competency. That was urban's favorite play was power. So we used to run it. It was Trussell's favorite play. It was urban's favorite play, but you know, under Wilson and, and Ryan, it was more stretch, uh, which is what he ran a lot with Adrian Peterson. That was kind of like his core competency. Um, but you know, these guys, they just got to get better at it. They got to get better looks at it. Uh, so we're going to go to the film room. I'm going to bust some film real quick just because I've gotten probably a thousand requests for me to do this. So I'm going to do this. Just show you some of the schematic stuff that these guys are doing. So here we're just running a tight zone. Again, I I, I think that the credit goes to, to Indiana because Indiana really schemed us up. Well, you know, again, we're just running our regular stretch play over here. You know, I, I wish Kyle would carry this fake out and do something so he could maybe hold this guy. But again, number one was not respecting any of our backside stuff because again, we never pull it and we never do anything off of this. We never do any like nice little easy stuff. So, you know, when this guy is just holding the hip, you have nowhere to go. And then on the front side, they run this little game where they come here and the end bolts inside. So watch this picture for the running back. Like, look at like, look at what Trey Henderson's dealing with. Trey Henderson, who sucks, who all these geniuses say sucks. This is the defensive end right in the hole. This is the end, got the backside. And then you got this guy pinching here. And then this guy's here. So I, I, again, unless you have God playing tailback, I don't know how you're supposed to do anything when you're the running back. So you run the tape and there's, I mean, there's literally three Indiana guys at the, you know, at the line of scrimmage unblocked, you know? And, and why is that? Because we didn't pass this game off at all. So Josh Fryer is locked in here. Matt Jones is pushing, pushing. They have to work this. This is something that Denver Broncos, when they were really good at stretch, they talked about how much they'd have to, to wrap this and walk through this, this, this little game, this little, you know, you're going to run stretch. You better get ready for this game because good teams are going to run this. And we're going to play guys. This is probably the worst defense we're going to play all year outside of the two turds we got the next two weeks. But like they do this little game and this isn't that hard guys. You know, we have three guys that, and like Matt Jones is just kind of falling on Josh Fryer. Josh is trying to do whatever, but I mean, you know, Matt has to feel this and take this and Carson has to climb and pick this off. Cause if you do that, and we get better. I mean, our backside double team isn't any better, you know, because we don't get up to the backside linebacker. You have a shot. But again, until we do something to hold that guy or we block him with something, we, you know, this guy's still always going to be a threat to, to chase it down. And again, 
We're going to play. This is one of the worst teams that we're going to play on our schedule. So when you're playing Georgia, Bama, that guy's making that tackle every time for a loss. So, you know, again, because Kyle, because Kyle just does this little, I don't know what this is. And again, this is, you know, what, what they coach just stand here and do nothing to hold this guy. Don't ever pull it. I mean, because again, I would have him boot. I'd have him do something, you know, anything other than just stand back here and, and watch, you know, Trey get tackled. But again, like, look at this photo. You know, I mean, we've got, we've got, you know, we're, we're, we're getting penetration here. We're not blocking anybody here. This double team's terrible. Cade, you know, Cade can't, you know, cause Cade is supposed to, and again, this is great coaching by Indiana. Cade is supposed to be doing this and, and kicking this guy out. But this guy is so tight on Jimmy Simmons hip that Cade has no surface. He has nothing to hit. So he ends up hitting the three technique. He ends up sitting, I mean, again, this is phenomenal scheme by Indiana. And again, Indiana's guy sat in our staff room, so he knows exactly what we like to do. So K doesn't know where to go, you know. And, and again, I I think K's got to be winging back on this guy, and they got to be double teaming up to here. But our double team's not any good, you know. I mean, Matt Donnie, who's supposed to be our best player, is getting grabbed here, so he can't climb. And so you, you look at that, and it's just like that's it's part scheme, but a lot of it's just poor offensive line play. And, and again. I'm not banging on the offensive line guys. The first game, a lot of these guys first start, but it's just something they got to clean up and got to get better at. Cause again, we're a stretch team. It's what we love to do. So we're going to see this little game a lot. And again, that that's not an easy thing to pick up, but you can do it. And you know, and when you're, when stretch is your focus, like you better get used to that game. Nevada, any comments on that? Well, that's just an example of uh, Trey Henderson's poor vision, right? You know, he's got to have better vision. Well, I mean, so like the, people, people are just so, they're so what, like, what, what, I mean, people are just so impossibly stupid. Cause they, they, they listen to these dumb narratives from people. I'm like, what vision there's nowhere to go. Like, look, this guy <laughs> here, 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 like, like, what are you supposed to do? Like you saw the play where chip got hit in the backfield with no pull. Again, if you're reading that, you just pull that and then, and then you're gone. And then, you know, the defense actually has to like break a sweat to stop you. Like, this is like, this is pudding. This is this is a cakewalk. We're not denting the defense. Our double teams aren't great. We're not passing off this game in the front. So again, if I'm Trey, I'm just like, guys, like just you know, throw me the ball or something. Don't don't hand it to me on this on this because I mean, there's nothing he can do. And then you know, and then Matt runs into him. <laughs> so it's like you know, if he's got all the Indiana guys plus Matt, like you know, and Matt's not he doesn't mean to do that. But I'm not trying to be mean. But it's just. I don't know. Any thoughts through that first one? I'm just going to wind up back this next one. Oh, this is the fourth down where it looks like it's a delay pass to Cade. So again, this is something that we we've gotten into. Um, but any reaction to that Nevada as I, as I get into this next. No, it's, it's so. just, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know what to say. It is, this is kind of what we've been saying. Like, you know, I thought yesterday the running backs got as much as was possibly blocked up for. And I, I didn't think they did any better. I didn't think they did any worse, but like sometimes there was just nowhere to go. There was absolutely nothing to do. And yeah. so, uh, but you know, when I, when I see people just banging on Trey Henderson, Oh, is this, I'm like, guys, what do you want him to do in a situation like that? And then you only have, 12 carries or 30 or whatever it is like that's that's eight percent of his carries was that play and i'm sure you've got you've got other play, remember that play where the guy comes into the into the, the, the hole i know you've got that one where the guy yeah. just smashes him in the backfield on that one yeah. just a free hitter it's like like what is he supposed to do well, um, well, 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 well well like again like we, we we were in this mode where it's like we're just gonna go heavy as possible we're gonna have like like right here this is like jim trussell ball 101 you know day one like we got like look how congested this box is and again i played in that football and we won a lot of games with that football but it doesn't mean it's the best way to do it because again when you bring all these guys in and you got you got you know you got three over here you got your tight end joe royer here then you got you know here's your right tackle here's luke montgomery who's our who's our like third jumbo tackle and then you got Cade, you know and then you got you got chip i mean this is I mean, God, I don't know. I mean, you, you got literally the entire offense is within what, you know, 12, 15 yards of each other, you know? So, I mean, you got this big jumbo look and again, you know, what do we do out of it? We run this little play pass and, and again, that's fine. You know I mean? We, we hold up again. 
I would I would release Joe. I don't know what he's doing. He's like kind of pass blocking, whatever. But you know, he should be doing something over here. And and you know, I, this what what this play was was this is a delay pass to Cade Silver. This is like fourth and one. We'd gotten stuffed in our running game, so of course we have to throw it when we need an inch. So you know, this is a delay to Cade. So Cade, he's trying to get in here, and he gets he gets jammed up. He gets held, and then you see him like he's trying to get out. He leaks. He shows his number. And then Kyle, again, like Kyle lost his mind here throwing this one because he's throwing it late over the middle, staring the guy down, and he gets jumped. And this could have been a disaster. But, you know, when you do this, you take Marvin and Emek off the field. They're the two best players on the entire team. You know, so again, anytime you take those guys off, and those guys terrify defenses, terrify them. So, like, for me, I would take him out, and I'd probably take him out. And I'd put Emeka and Marvin way over here or whatever and make them have to shift all their coverage over there and get a clearer picture for the O-line, you know? But again, this was something that we wanted to do. We wanted to do this big, fat, jumbo, hippo, rhino, whatever, buffalo, bison, whatever they call this formation. And, you know, again, like, can it work? Sure. But, you know, when, when you have Emeka and Marvin and they're like, they're better than 98% of the receivers in the NFL and they're sitting watching when you need a yard, like... Don't make Cade serve your primary. And Cade played the best game I think he's ever played. But still, it's that's that's what we have on fourth and one. So, and again, like you know, that that could have been a disaster. Again, that's something that you know, I'm I'm not I'm not into the 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 bunch it up and grind it out and grit your teeth and you know. And, and again, I you know, you got to get into running the game the ball. But man, like when we used to spread it out more. I mean, they got to honor Emeka and Marvin. I mean, that's the thing. The the, the glorious thing about having guys like that. You better, they better double one of those two. So they're going to take up two guys. You know, and Marvin's probably going to take up two. Because if you're going to pick one or the other, like you're going to double Marvin, put your best corner on Emeka, and then, you know, try to help him out too. But when you take those guys off the field, I think it's always, a, it's always a loss. It's always a loser play. You only got, you only got them for about three or four more months before they go to the league. So you might as well get them out there and get them going. And again, we didn't really involve them. I mean, they combined for 34 yards yesterday, which is, it's almost criminal, you know, against, against Indiana. I mean, you're not you're not playing uh, Patrick Sertain and and you know like these these dominating corners. We're playing a bunch of guys from Indiana that probably aren't NFL guys. Um, but you know, I I just I, I don't like that congestion uh, that congested metrics. I, just, I don't think it helps our offensive line when there's so many guys and and you can't really do anything because we ran the ball out of formation similar to that. We might not have done like the super jumbo one, but. You know, we, we tried stuff like that, and th those condensed boxes are so easy to defend. And it's like, why make us easier to defend when you have you have the nuclear bomb? You have Marvin Harrison. And why would you show up with a water pistol when you've got the nuke? You know, and that's that's my opinion. Um, here's a, here, here's another one. I'm going to go back to – I'll get another one in before I let you get a word in Nevada. This was Devin Brown's third play. So we try a Q run, which, again – schematically looks great, but you have to know the gap scheme and we're not good at the, the gap scheme. because we never run the gap scheme. Like we were brand new to the gap scheme this year. Cause we didn't run it for three, four years. Like we, we were just like neophytes in the game, but yeah, you know, we've got edge pressure out here and I don't know. Again, I don't know what Carson's coach to do. So I'm not, this is not blaming Carson. I'm just saying how I would fix it. If I was the O line coach or any line coach in the history of mankind, that's run the gap scheme, because I ran it at Ohio State. I ran it with Chicago Bears. I ran it uh, in high school. You know, if there's edge pressure, you have to go back and block everybody back and gap everybody down because otherwise you're going to get caught from behind. So you watch this, and you know they're bringing they're they're bringing what we used to call a shark, which is three guys. It's two guys off the edge. There's a linebacker, slant, 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 edge guy. So. You know, what What Josh Simmons has to do, if he does not, if he does not get a gap call, because he should get a gap call and everybody should gap back and pick it all up easy peasy, but we don't do that. Josh literally has to cut this guy and he has to get down and chop that guy's knee. And again, I don't know if he's coached to do that, but I'm telling you, that's the only way to stop it. Because this is almost like, it's almost like you're blocking like a bear defense. Because, you know, if, if this, if, if Carson's going to take this guy, Jimmy can't, and this guy's slanting, Jimmy can't get there. Orlando Pace couldn't get there. Like Jonathan Ogden couldn't get there. You have to take this guy's knee out and get him on the ground. Cause otherwise you just let him go. So like what's seven Brown supposed to do when he catches the ball, he takes one snap and the defensive end is, 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 is tackling him. You know, again, like that's that scheme, that's bad play calling. 
and it's bad coordination by the offensive line. You know, or you know, if they're not allowed to make a call, then that's just that's just a terrible play. And you should never run it again. So, again, you, you, there, there's mechanisms in football with a lot of these really simple schemes, especially like this is just this is just QB power. This is what Tim Tebow scored 50 touchdowns with at Florida. Like Donnie's pulling, and you have to gap this all the way back. So, I mean, I I, I would I would bet Carson is supposed to gap this all the way back. But again, part of that is Jimmy has to say, hey, there's edge guys out here. You know, slow it down and gap it back. You know, but again, if you don't get the gap call and you, if, if I, and I had to make this block a million times when I played at Ohio State with, with Trestle, because this is his favorite play. If I didn't get a gap call, I'm throwing on this guy and blowing, I'm, I'm cutting him right in the ACL. You have to. That's the only way you can make your block. You know, you can't, yeah, I mean, I mean, just this, this little like gap hinge, whatever it is, you, you have no chance. Absolutely no chance. I guess, I guess a guy who is getting off on the mark, he's getting off the snap because we didn't change our snap count all day. He's getting off on the mark right away. So, so Jimmy is just kind of, I mean, he's just like, this is just too leisurely for me. This is too, this is like your, this is just too, you know, again, you better, you better be flying, you know, and he's just going down there, just kind of nonchalant, trying to grab him. And again, like we get, we get stopped. And again, does it matter against Indiana? No, because they're just terrible. But like when you play like a real team and you need to convert this, like you, you got to get going, man. And again, I still think you got to gap this all the way back. And because you gap this, this is like a cakewalk. You know, you pick all this up. Because again, they're bringing all the pressure from back here and you're running over. You're literally running away from the pressure. This should be a fantastic play. But, you know, when you don't block the backside, this was like when we played the Florida Gators in 06 and we didn't cut off the backside guy. Like, I mean, we got a great double team. We killed these guys in here. Big old push. And I remember me and TJ Downer right at the front. We, we murdered these guys and we got cut off the backside. And we, and we didn't convert and we lost the national championship. So, I mean, you know, it doesn't matter until it matters. And again, you know, I don't, I don't like, and, and again, I don't know. I didn't know the beginning of this play, but there, there's literally no reason to have a Mecca here. There's no reason. A Mecca is not, again, I know he's a wide receiver. I know he's a human being. He has no interest in blocking at all. So split him out, put him out here, put him next to Brian Hartline, put him down here somewhere. Do not put him in the box because he's not going to do anything. You know, it's like, 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 what's the back going to do? Like, look at him. I mean, he gets, all he does is he kind of folds back. He doesn't know what to do. And he gets jacked. So again, but when you bring him into the box, then all of a sudden you add another guy to the box. So you got another guy that could potentially make the tackle and ruin the player. So again, I, I don't know what we're doing again. I don't know why we're going backwards schematically. I know that we're trying to be physical and tough and power, but again, I, I, I want these guys to be put in winner plays. And again, when you, when you have a Mecca and Marvin, man, put those guys out wide Make them have to cover them, you know. Don't because um, Emeka and Marvin go watch all their snaps, ladies and gentlemen. Go watch the guy; those guys block. They don't block. They're trying to go to the league. They're not trying to get hurt blocking. Come on, like they don't get held accountable for their blocking. They they don't even try most of the time. So don't put those guys in the box where it's like a fist fight. Put them out on the edge. Make them respect them. Make a corner cover them. Make a safety roll over to them. Do something like that. Any thoughts on that one, Nevada? Wow, that was a mouthful there, man. Mr. Bart, Bert Carton just got loose there with uh, some stuff. But look, it's impossible for anybody. If you've got a defensive lineman across from you that's slanting across your face, there is nothing that you're going to be able Like you said, the guys have got to peel back and help you out. There's nothing you can do if that happens. And, and, and in that situation, that was an impossible spot. And they, they kept trying to pull Donnie. They kept trying to pull Donnie, you know, and he'd have to make like these little nine jumps out there to the outside, and and he's not particularly good at that. And they kept trying to run that. And like I said, if guys aren't cutting off the backside, that's what happens on those plays. I mean, frankly, I, I look at what you guys did in 2006 against Michigan, and I, and I don't want to take the walk down memory lane, but what did you guys do against Michigan? You guys went four wide made Michigan kind of identify their stuff. And then when you run the quarterback, now you have numbers. Now you've got the numbers on them. You're not dragging everybody in the box and giving them the numbers. You're making them guard all your guys on the outside. And if you run the quarterback, you've got more hats in the box than they do. And that's that to me, that's a winning formula. And that's why that play, that, that quarterback draw that they called, that they dialed up for Kyle, that he just inexplicably went to the left and ran into the guy. That was a beautiful play call. That, that that's oh, the kind of play calls that, that 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 was schemed up well. That was blocked well by the offense. That was everything. And 
I mean, other than the quarterback running the wrong way and running into the guy, that's the kind of plays that you got to do. So that's when we talk about, you know, scheme, I think that's where I'm going with this stuff is that Ohio State's got to put their guys in better spots because, you know, it's it's not always the players that are terrible or always, you know, the guys that are just, this guy sucks or this guy's got to be replaced. This guy's like, you've got to put them in good spots. You've got to stay out of the loser plays schematically. We've got to at least be, we can't be two steps behind the defense. And I thought we were, you know, when I went back and reviewed, we, we were behind Indiana and that's, that's not where we should be. And I, I, I know that they had some insight in terms of what we're trying to do, but man, we knew that before the game. And Ohio State had to know that. And, and I think it, it's given Ohio State some stuff to work on, but they've got to be better about it because if not, this is going to be uh, this is going to be something that we're going to see the rest of the year. Like you said, college football, or all football is a game of, uh, of copying and, and repetition, and we're going to see these same types of issues going forward. So we need to be better. Yeah, and if I'm Tom Allen and Matt Garriani and, and I'm, you know, those guys, they're down on the field calling the defense – they get the personnel from up top. They say, okay, you know, there's guys on the dock. Okay, they're going three tights. Okay, they're going two tights. And I'm like, if I'm hearing that and I'm saying, so they're taking a mech off the field and Marvin and they're taking off Carnell Tate and Fl-. I'm like, oh my God, thank you, Jesus. I mean, this, I mean I'd mean, i be like, I mean, I would never not have three receivers. Like, with how good our receivers are, I'd never not have three out there because they're that good and they're that terrifying. And why did the quarterback draw work? Because we, we had our wide receivers out there. They had to cover those guys. They had to play zone defense or else they're going to get they're gonna get scorched. Those guys were terrified of Marvin Harrison. And we didn't and we didn't make them pay. That's the scary thing. I'm like, guys, like, you know, run that Q draw. Because you're you're going to get a light box because you're so scared of a mecca Marvin. I mean, I thought Julian played his best game as a Buckeye. He really, I mean, he was buzzing around there. He's trying to get back on that arc of being, you know, a high-level dude. Carnell had his first catch, like, Dude, do not take those guys off the field for for three tight ends. I mean, that's insane. Um, this next one was just – this is just like a basic blitz pickup. You know, when I coached tackles, like when I was a GA in 12, Urban Meyer told me, he's like, Kirk, you are the offensive tackles coach. The tackles are on you. So that's Reed Fragle. It's Jack Buhort. It's Taylor Decker. So you got to coach them, teach them, teach them how to read defense. Okay, coach, gotcha. I got it on lock. So one of the first things I would teach these guys – if you're this guy, and if you're the field side tackle, which Josh is, so field side means you're to the wide side of the field. So right here, you're Josh Simmons. So what the first thing I have these guys look at are the safeties. So where is this, where is this guy at? So why does that guy matter in the grand scheme of things? Well, if this guy is lined up over the slot receiver, there is a really, really, really high chance that this guy's going to blitz. Really high, like 90%. So when you see that, and this is a simple pickup, and you have a back to your side in pass protection, that guy is going to be left for the back. So you're good. But there's a really good chance that if they run a fire zone or something else, that they're going to bring, you know, this is, again, this is a day one blitz, and we and we just miss it. This is, this is a, we call this a Florida or Florida switch. And I mean, this was the Steeler, I mean, Urban called it Steeler, we called it Florida uh, with Tress. But this is like day one stuff. This is so easy. You know, I mean, because the thing you got to do here, if you're Josh, is point. Hey, this guy is probably going to come. He's probably going to show up. You know, so, you know, get ready for it. And then your eyes go, look at this guy. What's this guy doing? What's his stance look like? Because if they're bringing it, this is, this is probably the most common blitz in all of football. And Josh Simmons, for whatever reason, it's like he it's like he's on Mars. Like he's like he's never seen that before. And this is something that they probably should have walked through. They probably have walked through a thousand times through the course of summer OTAs, training camp. And like all Josh has to do is just kick back. You know, th- this goes right to the guard, super easy. I mean, this is this is like the easiest pass protection you could ever do. You know, you already, and you and you have the back. Because if you don't have the back, then you just have to turn it and do a full slide out to it, and Josh would pick it up. But with the back there, this is like a cakewalk. And for whatever reason, Josh, it's like he's never seen it before, you know. So, so he steps up, back, flustered, and and this guy gets loose. And honestly, this is a holding call. He grabs a shoulder pad, which again they didn't call it, but you know, if you reach out and grab the guy. But again, this is too easy. And again, this is India, the same Georgia, the same Bama. This isn't Michigan, but we're gonna see this stuff because it looks like we don't know what we're doing in pass protection. And this is 
this play could have been an absolute disaster going into the half. There's 14 seconds left. This easily could have been a fumble. I mean, again, if he gets there a millisecond later, it could be a sack fumble. The ball, the ball could squirt back here. And again, this is the kind of stuff that gets quarterbacks put in the morgue. You know, so you better get that. You better walk through this about 8 million times and tell these guys to get their get in gear because that's easy. Like, I'm just saying, like, I, I picked that up a billion times as a player, and, you know, and they, and they start running it back. But, you know, you, you have to, when you're playing tackle, look at the safeties. You're up in a two point. We pass way more than we ever used to pass. So, I mean, like pass protection should be, I mean, you should obviously be blindfolded and be able to pick up a, a blitz like that, especially when it's from depth. Like that wasn't even, that wasn't even like, I mean, like when you see, I'm going to go back to this real quick. When you see this picture, they're not even hiding it. I mean, like when this guy's, we used to call this topped. When he's, when he's topped, when the, when the nickel slot guy is topped, he's coming, you know? And if he's not coming, then, you know, there's about a 5% chance he ain't, you know? And, and even so he's the backs guy. But again, I don't know. It, it, again, I think the way Josh peeled off on this is he knows that he has that guy. I mean, cause again, they got these three, he's out here on the edge. But but again, this this is just too it's too easy, you know. And, and I'm like, and, and th- that could have been a disaster. And again, we're playing, you know, the second worst team, on, you know, on our in the Big Ten behind Northwestern. But I don't know, man. Like like again, I I know that it's a lot of new guys, a lot of young guys. I know Carson's a new center, didn't play it all last year. Which again, that's Ryan Day's fault they didn't play him. I mean, you got to get him in the game so he can get used to some of the stuff. But Carson played well. I mean, again, for a young guy who's never played first start, uh, he's got to run the show. But there's there's calls that that I believe he missed. Again, I don't know what Justin coaches. I don't know what um, you know what, what what Ryan Day wants to do. But I I know what generic you know bl- pickups are, especially in gap scheme. I mean, I could I could do that in my sleep. But you know, I I'd assume that either they didn't want to call it or whatever. But there's mechanisms even if you don't get a call if it's a loud place on how to block things. And it was just like we just missed on a lot of communication stuff. Any thoughts on that one, Nevada? Well, I just like it, let's let's go to the flip side of that to take inventory of the good. You know, we were sacked zero times yesterday, and you know that's good. Yeah, I mean, and I'm not saying that Indiana is a great defense or that they're invested, but at least it wasn't sack a palooza. And you know, um, I think that those are things that we can clean up. Um, you know, like I said, it, it seems like it's day one stuff. It seems like it's just communication stuff. It seems like you, you know, things that they should be able to work through. Fry's a, you know, a good technical offensive line coach. Um, I'm confident they can, they can fix that stuff because I thought in general in pass blocking, I thought was, was okay. I mean, for me, I gave him a B on pass blocking yesterday. I didn't, I didn't, it didn't feel like it was like a, you know, a, a you know, fire raid every time that they came mm-hmm. in there. We didn't have any. We didn't have any sacks, and um, and I thought again when we go back to the you know the running plays. I thought the running plays were, were all was schematic for the most part, and um, I don't care who the guys were on the offensive line. I think I would say eighty percent of the plays that were negative plays were we were out schemed, and it it wasn't about a, an individual breakdown or it wasn't about a mistake or it was about, it was just it was a, it was a bad call. It was a loser play. And uh, if we can fix some of those loser plays, clean up some of these protections, then I think we've got the foundation for a really good offense because we got some really, really good players. Um, we just got to we got to fix some of these mistakes. Yeah, I mean, talent wise, we have the best team in the Big Ten, talent wise, top to bottom, most talented team in the Big Ten, bar none. Mar- we, I mean, we have the best player maybe in the country in Marvin. Mech is a top ten player. You know, our defense was lights out. Again, there's a lot of good. This is not just you know. Uh, just whipping guys incessantly, but you know, there's just little things and some of it's play calling. Some of these guys need to play better. Uh, some, of it, I mean, some of this is, it's going to be putting, you know, if there's a loser scenario, loser situation, there has to be a way. Again, we still have audibles for everything with urban and with trust. So it's like, if you're in a play that has zero chance of effectiveness, you got to get out of it. You have to, you, there's got to be a check to get to something again. It, it takes like a millisecond to change from a run to a pass and throw it to Marvin or throw it to, to Mecca or whatever, you know? Cause I mean, again, if they're going to load the box up and we got Marvin out there, you better, you, they, those guys better have more than 34 yards, you know, uh, basically in every game going forward. Um, last play I'm going to get into, this is a toughie, man. I just, you know, we run this zone play and you know, run it to the short side of the field. Like we're obsessed with running this stretch play to the short side of the field. 
And yet we're running into a three technique, which is really, really hard. And, you know, unless, and Donnie flat out has to play better. Like his hands have been bad. He's played wide for a guy who's maybe the, probably the strongest guy on the entire team. He's not playing with a lot of strength right now. He's not just kicking guys all over the field. Like I expected him to, um, like he should be doing him. He's, he's go, go look at every all American preseason list. There is he's, he's one of the guards on every team. Go look at every mock draft projected in the first round. So, you know, Donnie did not have a great day. His hands are all over the place. And again, for a guy that benched 40 reps at 225 or whatever it was, like he's got to play like it, you know, and he's, he's strong as an ox physically as gifted of a guard as we've ever had at Ohio State, but he's not playing it like it right now. So this is really tough. So we're, we're, we're running stretch here. You know, these guys got to work here. Um, you know, again, like this is, you know, when you run into a three technique, I mean, you know, the, the center really has to get on his horse. And this guy either has to have just an incredible reach block. I mean, Josh Fry's got to get up here. I mean, this is, this is just like the angles aren't great. Like the only way that this works is if they let him chop and cut this guy. If you can cut that guy like the old Broncos used to, and that's so legal, I checked before I did the show. If you cut him, you got a shot. But you watch this play, you know, and, and Donnie, you know, I mean, Donnie, they, I mean, these guys got to get cooking. They got to get flying Trey, you know, here, um, again, it's just, you know, Trey's getting hit in the backfield. Like, I mean, again, this is this is a two-man combination block working to this guy. This, you know, I mean, this is, this is like, again, this is like seventh grade Dublin Football League, you know, zone play stuff. You know, this combination block, like, Donnie's got to get this. You know, I mean, Donnie's got to, you know, I mean, Carson's got to giddy up, and then you got to get this outside half because, you know, 44 – is probably going to invite some of our guys to his draft party because he's going to get drafted now after this game, you know. But but again, you know, Donnie's getting held because his hands are bad. Like I mean, Donnie Donnie comes out, bear hugs the guy, and 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 give this guy credit because he's holding he's holding Donnie. And and Donnie, if his hands were better, he won't let the guy grab him. You know, he'd be able to get. I mean, he's got to fight to get his hands off him and make this play. So Trey has a chance now. You know, the thing I said at the start of the play. Is if we would cut this guy, which I, I know we don't do because that's not what you know, that's not what we it's not cool or whatever. But like if you chop this guy and just take this guy out of the picture at the hash, and you watch let Fryer work up here, 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 here. If you chop him, like imagine if this guy's chopped right at the hash. So take him out of the picture, he's gone. And then we push here, we push here. Cause like really what this play is, you get Fryer up here, you get Cade here. This needs to wheel. If this guy's out of the picture, this needs to wheel back here, which is tough. But again, like we don't, we don't chop the guy. So, so he has this murky pitcher. He sees this. He expects his guys to get up to this because it's really, it's just not a good look to run to a three technique, honestly. Um, you know, it, it should almost always cut back. But, you know, like if this guy's chopped it on the ground and Josh can wheel here, like it's going to there. But again, we don't, we don't get up to the guy that we're supposed to get up to. So we have an unblocked guy in in the one hole when we're pushing it front side. So I don't know. Like, like again, this it's just, it's just not a good look to run it into. And Carson, if Carson wanted to be great, like something Nick Mangold used to do all the time, because you know, Nick used to love going front side and taking it all the way. And what Car what Nick would do is he'd come through and you know, when this guy's engaged and can't get off, he would blast this guy right in the hip and he'd go flying over here. And then you'd have this big, massive chasm and then he'd climb up and then you'd have this. And, like when we ran for a gazillion yards in 05 running this play, that's what we did. You know, and, and Carson, Carson's high and he doesn't, he doesn't get a good surface, but Carson needs to be low and punch that guy as hard as he can on this guy's hip. And he'll go, you know, you know, over, over 10 cups. I can't swear, but it's like, you know, there's this, this old saying, you know, if you do that, you cut this guy, then this is going to the safety and it's probably out the gate. You know, so again, are we close? Yeah, I mean, because 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 Josh, Josh Fryer actually played really well. I mean, I, I said he should play right tackle. He played right tackle. He was good in pass pro, good in the run game. Cade played his best game, but you know, if we if we chop this guy and we blast his hit, I mean, this thing's clean. This thing's gone. Now, but now, but on that play, shouldn't I mean? What I'm thinking, when I'm when you're lining it up for me, when I'm looking at number two right there, I'm looking. I'm thinking Evan Spencer in the national champ or the game against Alabama. And I'm seeing Evan Spencer coming down and he's got the angle on that end blasting him. And now the left, the, uh, the tackle can get out there and get to 44 and make the play out there. But instead two just kind of stands there and just kind of, no, I, 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 our, our, our guys just, they're not active in the run game. Like our receivers don't block. 
I mean, just, no, just look watch, at that. Go, I mean, go watch it, the film. I mean, yeah. They, they, they so, don't walk. And, and, and so this is another example. This is a, a second. This is the second of Trey's twelve years. Well, does, doesn't have the vision. <laughs> What's he supposed to do? I mean, like, come on, guys. Like, well, well if, if I don't care who the running back. If that could be O.J. Simpson, Emmett Smith, Walter Payton, and whomever rolled it, and Saquon Barkley rolled the one. But you're you're not going to go anywhere. That just that just it's it's got no chance. But again, it's there. Two comes in and cuts that guy off, and and the, the uh, and Jimmy Simmons climbs up and gets forty four, and that, that play's got a chance. Yeah, I mean, it's just we don't, you know, like it, 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 if this combo doesn't get done, we're done. And if we don't get this guy chopped or or do so, I mean, really, if you cut this guy, that's the best way to run the play. We don't cut because again, it's probably not cool to cut guys. But like when we when the when we were really good and and the Broncos were really good, they would cut that guy, and he's out of the photo. But again, like this combo block, it, it's dead. And again, against the three technique, it's tough. You need your center. I mean, he's got to be hauling it to get to this. And he's probably going to push this and make a big massive pile over here. And then he has to push up to this. Matt's got the tough job. His footwork isn't good. He steps over himself. Again, like uh, Matt's footwork's actually terrible. Um, yeah, because he steps under himself. He has like like when he when he makes contact, look at his feet. I mean, he's like clicking his heels. You know, what I mean, again, he's not. He's got to he's got to get rolling. You know, and again, I don't know if it's hot or it's anxiety or they haven't hit the sled enough or what it is, but. You know, it, this this isn't this is a tough job. You know, Carson could if he gets good at this and hits this guy's hip, this thing's gone. You know, but again, I just cut the guy, I and mean, that's like the e that's easy mode. You know, we always have to do this crap or whatever. But and and Josh gets up, and Josh and Kate are perfect on the backside. I mean, they they lock their guys down. You know, but again, like when you have a guy running through the B gap, like it's. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what Trey's supposed to do here. He literally watch. He has the ball for one second. All right, he gets the ball here, and this guy's here, and and one and and Trey's expecting one of his guys to cover this guy up. One of them. I mean, there's two guys blocking one guy, and this guy's scot free. So I don't know what you're supposed to do if you're Trey, because I mean, it's a tough look when you're just getting hit in the backfield immediately, you know. Which was it was just a kind of a reoccurring theme in our in our deal. So uh, this is a good play, though. We're gonna run through this one real quick, and then uh, we'll wrap this thing. Um, this is the counter. I mean, we, we started running this little counter. G. G. Scott had a nice game yesterday. That was probably the best game he's played as a Buckeye. Um, you know, we got Cade in line, uh, blocked it up. You know, and Chip, I thought Chip played great. I mean, he really ran hard. He's a freak of nature. So, you know, again, this is just the old counter G scheme. And it, and it worked out great. You know, kicked him out. And, you know, you're you're running, you know, like, look like look at this. I mean, there's, there's nobody home. And, and Chip... Again, I think Chip's our second best running back behind Trey. I don't even think it's close. I think Chip's an NFL back. I really do. Um, I don't know if he'll ever get enough touches here, but I think when he goes to the combine, he's going to explode. But, you know, th this is the kind of stuff that we can do. And again, you know, you see, I mean, Julian's trying. I mean, he's trying. You know, if he, if Julian could actually block somebody like here, I mean, you know, come to balance, settle your feet, get in the guy's way. Like, I mean, Julian doesn't really touch the guy. I mean, he tries, but it's just like, you know, you know this thing's going to be ripping outside. And it's like, if you take that guy out of the photo and it's one-on-one -on -one here, it's a whole different play. But Jolene's guy makes the, makes the play. I think this is, uh, again, I'm not trying to pick on Jolene, but it's like, you know, we, we put these guys in here. I don't know why you reduce them down because they, they don't block anybody. And again, I'm not trying to be Mr. Hater, but, you know, and, and this is tough for Jolene. You know, he false steps right off the bat. And then you, you want him to go up there and, and block a blitzing free safety. And he doesn't, yeah, if the if this is Georgia's safety, this is a tackle for a loss. It's Indiana, so we kind of get out of it, which is fine. Um, but again, like 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 Donnie, he's our best offensive lineman. Who I, I I love Donnie. He wears my numbers. So you always root for the guy wearing your number to Ohio State. But like, you know, this, this is an Indiana guy, and he just you know, no eyes, no hands, trying to come off the ball. Feet again. Look at the feet. You know, I, again, like you know, the combo block here is better with Matt and Carson. See, this is what I like. Matt and Carson coming off the rock, whooping this guy back into the backfield, just denting him right away. Josh Fryer, great job. You know, and, and Chip, you know, Chip, when he gets it, man, he's ripping through there, which is great. I mean, he's got a guy literally about to tag him in the backfield and he just bursts right through it. You know, G, I mean, you know, Joe, you know, this is this is tough for Joe Rover. Joe, Joe Rover hangs in there. I mean, that's you know, you're you're not gonna get, you know, a 240-pound tight end to kill one of these really you know, their ends are actually decent. 
But I mean, Joe hangs in there and gets enough to to move the chains. So, you know, it's probably the yeah, here's mine. And, and again, like this is, you know, this is part of the problem when we run these, you know, we run these these wacky powers with the two tight ends on the edges. You know, the problem is like we haven't run power in years. So Donnie, who was a high school tackle, has never really run power before. So he's not real adept at pulling. He does a skip pull here. Um, just kind of you know, kind of lost. You know, he's trying to get, I mean, he's, I mean, he's trying to get to a gap, B gap, C gap, D gap. It's like an E gap power pull, which is crazy. That's a long pull for one of these guys. Cause he has to skip like nine times. One, two, three, four. Then he finally gets over there and there's just, you know, I mean, there's just nothing. He just kind of falls, you know, and doesn't, doesn't get anybody. Again, I'm not trying to pick on Donnie, but this is, I, I, I don't like it. Take him out of the photo, split him out, make that Marvin, make it somebody, you know, because again, this is still a pretty, this is a clustered box right here, you know, and now that we're trying to to grind it and get ready for Michigan, which I, I respect that. I mean, because again, Michigan, you know, they, they whooped us last year and it's because they line up like this and they run it. So this should make our defense better. But um, any thoughts on this Nevada? Again, there's good things in here. Like Cade, Cade's getting into this guy. You know, again, Cade, Cade probably played his best game yesterday. I was really happy for him. Cade gets in here, moves the point. You know, Josh Fryer gets enough of it. You know, again, Jimmy Simmons just doesn't play. He just doesn't play with a lot of power. I mean, I don't know if he's ever, I mean, he's just not a big weight room guy. Cause you see him get bounced right here. You know, he's, he's on his heels from, you know, little guy, which is, you know, whatever. Um, and mine kind of chugs it in, but you know, I, I just think that these guys could uptick the physic the physicality a little bit, uh, going forward. And again, schematically, there's a lot of stuff that's close, you know, there's a lot of stuff to be happy about. And there's a lot of stuff that they really need to, to amp up and, you know, like I said, the thing about football is all the stuff that gave us issues against Indiana, we're going to see against Youngstown State, we're going to see it against Western Kentucky, and we're absolutely going to see it against Notre Dame. So, um, well, we uh, ran it. This game's about to kick off, this Florida State game. Nevada, any final thoughts on our scheme? Just got to – we got to be better. I mean, I, oh. I, I really think that 80% of our issues are, are schematic. I don't think that they're personnel. I think that we're close. I think we just need some tweaks, some enhancements, and you know we got to stop doing things the hardest possible. I think right now, you know, we we need to look to try to go to easy mode instead of trying to make it hard. I mean, I feel like we're running into the walled fortresses a lot of times. Um, I think we're too predictable by down and distance and by formation. And I think once we stop being that predictable, um, I, I think the offense is going to start purring like magic. And uh, the same players vastly different results if you, you can just have a little bit of creativity on the offensive side and that's one of the biggest thing that i think we need the biggest step forward i think that for this team i totally agree i think we just got to keep grinding and again a lot of stuff you can fix and clean up again a lot of these guys i mean jimmy simpson never played a real football game for him played at san diego say that ain't that's not real football it's not big 10 football you know a lot of these guys getting their first taste of extended action and some guys played really well like Cade server played great josh fryer I thought Carson Hinsman took a step. You know, our guards have to be better. Jimmy Simmons has to be better. Uh, I thought Chip played hard. You know, Chip's a guy that's kind of a man without a country because he's played, you know, linebacker, fullback, you know, wingback, running back. And when he got his carries, man, he looked good. I mean, I, I like I like what Chip does. I think Trey's a guy you just got to keep feeding him, man. I mean, you got to get him some touches where he can get out in space and not get hit in the backfield because, again, those suck. You know, those are demoralizing and – you know, some of the play calls are demoralizing when, you know, when we get stuffed on some of the stuff and, you know, I think we'll get better. Like, I think that, you know, this will be a nice tune up weekend. Like I said, home opener guys will be all jacked up. So we are going to wrap this up. We appreciate you guys tuning in as always. Buckeyescoop.com is your home for Ohio State analysis, the best analysis. We have a ton of stuff on the first week uh, as we get you ready for the Young South State home opener, which will be at noon on Big Ten Network. Appreciate you guys being in here. I want to know what did you learn? Put it in the comments. Uh, what do you like these all 22 breakdowns? Again, I love doing them. I think that I get a lot of great feedback on them. Let me know if you enjoyed them. What else would you like to see? Uh, also, give me your MVPs, offense and defense, and what do we need to get better at? So love reading your feedback. We appreciate you guys so much. We are going to be on Buckeye Scoop all night tonight watching this LSU Florida State game. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, but as always, if you enjoyed this content, please leave us a like. Click subscribe. Also, click that little alert bell. Those are huge for us. They help us grow the channel. Um, send it to your friends. If you enjoy our content, send it to all your Buckeye homies and uh, homegirls that enjoy this. Uh, again, 
Uh, we got to keep getting better, folks. So appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much, Buckeye Nation. And thank you, Scoop family. I'm going to be at BuckeyeScoop.com all night for a game thrift with LSU Florida State game. You should jump on there with us and let's talk football. Let's talk Buckeyes. Let's talk everything. Appreciate you guys. You guys have a great rest of your night. Go Bucks.